Thank you. As uh, Matt says, uh, we've got uh, 218 slides to go through today. So um, that's going to cover four projects uh, in the next 25 minutes. So I'm glad it's early in the day and uh, the presentation fatigue hasn't set in yet. Apologies to the speakers following me. Uh, this was the original title of this talk, but um, I had trouble naming things. So here's another take, possibly a little too ambitious. Uh, better, uh, perhaps a slightly more clickbaity ring to it, uh, even better, uh, more accurate, <laughs> an important qualifier. Uh, okay, I think we can stop here. So I'm a designer and front-end coder. Uh, but in reality, maybe actually uh, a photographer and artist who stumbled into an easier way to make a living. Uh, I've spent the last 16 years wandering around documenting things I find interesting with a camera and pencils. I like to try and find the humor in a situation. I find the mundane interesting. I like pure composition. Being curious is important. Playing with layers, foreground and background, light and shadow. Coincidence. And timing. I have three hypotheses that have been slowly coalescing these past few years as I try to find purpose for and share my creative output. And the first is that there's so much creativity out there. The effect of social media is that it flattens out everything into one long, homogenous scroll. Something that might capture your attention for a few seconds, be liked and discarded, it becomes disposable. Secondly, I miss the exploratory and random nature of uh, what you would stumble across before social networks ruled everything. You had to do the work. Now everything is just served to you by an algorithm. And lastly, time spent is more worthwhile than a quick like, in my opinion. Uh, it's about meaningful engagement. So a quick word about inspiration. Of course, there's endless inspiration on the web. But if I'm interested in certain types of experiences, then surely other are, uh, others are too. I'd want to make something that I'd want to experience myself uh, and hopefully inspire others to do the same, resulting in uh, a more unique internet. Music has always been a huge influence, uh, but this bled into visual art. In the late 90s, I was always uh, massively influenced by Radiohead and their artist Stanley Donwood, the, the cut and paste aesthetic. Uh, they had Radiohead.com, which was an exploratory but sort of pointless website. Uh, I used to spend hours in the school computer rooms in the late 90s on their 56K modem, just browsing for like any snippets of information of the band, artwork, lyrics, etc. Fast forwarding to 2004 and Greg Washington's portfolio site, this was using Flash to, in my opinion, incredible effect. It's possibly the single reason I got into design. And this was also responsive design before that was a thing. <laughs> More recently, long read articles uh, with immersive storytelling such as this one, like in this case, uh, subtly augmenting reality. Street photography, Joel Meyerowitz, for example, a New York documentarian, candid moments in space and time, as well as Siegfried Hansen, graphic compositions, observations, and impeccable timing, as well as any number of its nice that features on photography and illustration. And now just a really quick word on technology. Um, my tech journey has been something like this. There were the early days of HTML and CSS, and just throwing stuff on the web with FTP. There were the wild, inaccessible west of the Flash days. There were the messy days of jQuery, Angular, React. These are all JavaScript uh, frameworks. As a designer who's been in a constant battle with getting stuff to work on the technical side, uh, this has been my past decade or so. Uh, getting something on the web just became increasingly difficult. It wasn't just about FTPing HTML files. You know, you had Git, you have the terminal, you've got Webpack. I just it came to about 2017, and I felt like I just couldn't keep up anymore. But then slowly but surely, it felt like standards like React were emerging, frameworks like Next.js, 
styling with Tailwind CSS, as well as really well integrated hosting services like Vercel, which make it relatively easy and free to actually to publish things on the internet. And apologies for the obligatory AI slide, but honestly, it's incredible how much this technology can and has helped me already come up with creative technical solutions. So about the projects, I want to talk about four projects chronologically today. Um, they all involve travel, documentation, and for want of a better word, storytelling of some kind. Of course, we start with maybe my favorite city, Tokyo. Now, at NetLife, I'm very fortunate to have an educational budget. Um, and instead of just going to another conference to watch people talk about stuff they made, um, in October 2019, I realized I had an idea that had been bubbling for a while, uh, to travel somewhere interesting, alone, and make something fun out of it. So I went to Tokyo. I wanted to wander the streets with a camera and sketchbook, documenting everything and anything. Uh, in my opinion, it's impossible to walk there for more than 10 meters without finding something interesting going on. <laughs> Here's just a few examples of the randomness I stumbled across. I found time to sit down and take stock of material and even start chipping away at a React site, um, throwing around some HTML and CSS while I was there sitting in cafes. I got obsessed with this rabbit hole of finding every utility box that looked like an animal face. I got stuck in a hotel room during a typhoon for 24 hours and played with a Japanese Beatles cover band, as you do. The resulting site was kind of a diary of the trip with various diversions and explorations. This was about all the sketching I did in Figma. The rest was just HTML and CSS right in the browser. It's important that it would be engaging on both mobile and, most importantly for me, higher resolution, larger screens where you can really appreciate the, the, con the content. There was lots of sketching. Those aforementioned uh, utility boxes uh, created a rabbit hole of their own uh, where I decided I needed to make an illustration system which would kind of assemble all of them into one um, assimilated uh, set. Um, and this, in turn, uh, led down a rabbit hole while I was in Tokyo uh, to want to reso print. Uh, so I found this studio, and it's essentially like screen printing layer by layer with a machine. Uh, I managed to do this on the last day before I came home, which was really fun. Um, this resulted in a really simple uh, little zine of these uh, machine monster animal things. Um, here's just another couple of details from the site, and just a quick scroll through to kind of show some of the uh, interaction on scrolling and uh, to try and build up the story uh, the storytelling. It would take about three months after my trip to actually complete the site. So now I just want to take one last detour into motivation uh, before the other projects. Uh, remembering, looking back to March 2020, everything was shut down, there was no travel on the horizon. It got me thinking, I have so much material from the previous decade, could I make use of it? Otherwise, what's the point of it all? The, ma the material we generate is either going to be purely of personal interest, which is fine, or it could be shared and contribute in a wider cultural context. Here's my main cab camera library. Um, I've taken a lot of photos between 2007 and now. At this point, I'm thinking to myself, what would Jerry McGovern, Mr. Worldwide Waste, say? Uh, you could also say Don Norman, given what we talked about earlier. Um, I started these projects at the same time that Jerry was talking about the issue of digital waste on the internet and why we should be cutting as much as possible. Some of these 60,000 photos have been published before on various platforms, but I felt like each of them was so transient, and in the case of you know, social media, the quality is terrible. You see no detail. The spirit of Jerry was haunting me, and the strong desire to prove the importance of culture and justify my need to take and store and back up so many photos. There was also my iCloud phone library, which is like an important resource, all my phone photos. OK, Jerry, I get it. I've got enough material now that if I didn't travel ever again, which might be best for the planet, I could make endless projects and still wouldn't have time to make use of it all. I can only try my best. I still don't think he's impressed. Secondly, I want to devalue social media and other standardized ways of displaying work. 
It started with communities like Flickr. They never really went anywhere. Then there were ed editorial but not very flexible products like es Exposure. Now everything is basically Instagram, not to, even to mention TikTok, which I'm not touching. Uh, everything's so transient. People's appreciation for quality is also now totally skewed. They're impressed by things that don't really deserve the attention, or they take quality work for granted. <laughs> Working on your own project, there are no limits to what you can explore or what rabbit hole you can get lost in, for better or worse. Things might take an unexpected direction, and you're guaranteed to find new tools and skills that can then feed back into client work. So pleasantly surprised by the warm reception to the Tokyo project, I was encouraged to pursue a more ambitious sequel, a single web page that would consume me in my COVID home office for two years. The natural successor was New York, a city I've visited several times and have a lot of material from. So along with the thousands of photos I had already, I started drawing with colored pencils, which I hadn't done for many years. Uh, I was inspired by uh, historic uh, New York Times, uh, what they called a stacked deck of typography for these different stories, as well as any number of other uh, graphical inspirations from the New York Times. So the natural starting point was just rip off their name, but add a C, just to differentiate a little bit, and have a <clears throat> suitably hip uh, top-level domain uh, from Spain. Uh, there was some very loose idea sketching in Figma, uh, but this very, again, moved quickly into code and designing in the browser. One of the advantages of coding design that I love is that you can make things feel more organic uh, by introducing randomness. You can present a slightly different experience every time, rewarding repeat viewings. For example, loading a random photo each time the user visits or playing with random positions of elements on the screen. Experimented with dragging interactions, to kind of engage the user a bit more in the story. And here's the aforementioned stack deck of headlines informing the navigation, uh, the concept being that every type of uh, type style would um, represent a theme on the page. I went down another rabbit hole when I was in New York of taking photos of every ATM machine, of course, I could find, because um, they're so random and varied. This, in turn, led to another rabbit hole. Uh, I had an idea to do something with the type from years ago. And I thought, OK, now you can variable fonts are a thing. If you don't know, um, you can have the different styles within the same font. So essentially, I could make a font just of three letters, um, but multiple styles using Glyphs app. You can then animate these with simple CSS to quite a nice effect. Uh, I also went deep into overly descriptive alt tags uh, for all the images. The site might actually be more interesting with a screen reader, but don't hold me to that. There was text on SVG paths. You can do some really interesting conceptual stuff uh, while it's still being accessible. And at the same time as I was working on the project, an opportunity came up to apply for a Graphile stipend. Um, this is a grant issued by the Norwegian Association for Graphic Design. Um, I was very fortunate to receive the grant, which would uh, allow me to take another three months uh, sabbatical to work on the project. I celebrated for a moment, then realized I had all this time. What can I do with it? Of course, maybe I should try printing something. So then I was like, OK, here's another rabbit hole. I don't know what I'm doing. Should I start stitching stuff together? Turns out you can just glue things. So OK, I went down this rabbit hole. I was looking for glue, and then I started printing. I was trying to replicate the same effect that was on the website. Uh, I had to have like an improvised book press at home. I found out you have to like do all these little nicks in the side so that the glue sticks. Um, and there was more press. It was just like uh, like a three-week rabbit hole down down this uh, road. And so at this point, I still had this kind of sabbatical, and I thought, okay, I've been thinking about an overarching concept for these sites and other stories. Um, so. For this third project, I wanted the home for these. Uh, in my domain name research, I stumbled across the dot .directory domain, which would be a suitably clumsy and appropriate home for this site, somewhere being the natural accessory. However, given that it would just essentially be text listing projects, I thought I should do something more. Um, so why not just make a font? Um, so I don't claim to be a type designer, but this is my first attempt. Uh, but it was an incredibly interesting learning experience. I found that glyphs is far and away the best way to edit vectors. 
So this somewhere geo was born very slowly over a period of two years. Stepping back a moment to the concept, I really wanted something custom that would represent the idea of the site. So there was the base shape of the map pin, which could then be integrated into some of the letter forms, resulting in something like this. Um, but then I realized, ah, this is a bit too specific for a smaller type. It's not going to be very legible at uh, body text sizes, so I had to have one without the pointy bits. So here's how it would look at smaller sizes. Um, or more complex layouts like this. Another example with related compass glyphs. And I also went down a rabbit hole of associated glyphs that are integrated into the typeface itself. Here's a quick scroll through um, that site. Uh, I wanted it to also be able to house smaller stories where I don't have as much material for it, their own feature site, as opposed to the larger, um, yeah, to these uh, aforementioned sites. The site and the font are a constant work in progress, and you can see how, um, yeah, one of these uh, less feature sites only houses uh, photos, for example. Again, during the COVID period, I realized there wouldn't be much travel on the horizon. I had so much material from the past decade plus of living in Oslo that it would be the next logical choice to focus on. So for the last project, the idea of Oslo Observer was born. I'd spend the last month of my stipend time and then another year after that finishing this. So again, after much browsing of funky domains uh, with both connotations of some kind of newspaper, but also literally observing or documenting. That's what this project was all about. Uh, seeing as I was mostly just spending a little too much time inside anyway with no travel, it was good to stay, take stock of all the material I already had. I think I was spending a bit too much time on Instagram stories. There was categorizing of material in Lightroom into different um, yeah, categories. Uh, and also on the graphic side of things, uh, I went through a period of kind of idea generation while I was still kind of working on the New York project. I had these ideas. I'd done a bunch of sketching uh, a few months before, starting to think about could there be a, a different navigational concept and not just have one long scrolling site, but actual navigation. Um, the letters of Oslo lend themselves to uh, really graphical treatments. Um, very simple, kind of four letters. So I started playing with those in different formats, messing around with um, other ways to present them. And they also started kind of forming into this face. So I was wondering if maybe some identity, uh, some visual identity could be um, worked on there. Um, and then back, back to the kind of variable fonts that I mentioned before, I was wondering, well, maybe I could make different styles of uh, the, each letter form, depending on which uh, section of the site that you're on. Um, and talking about navigation, uh, also one thing that I found was inspiring was the Norwegian tradition of uh, going on trips um, in nature and the signage that you'd find there. So I quite literally ripped this off. There's quite a lot going on in this one, but it kind of gives you the impression of what I was trying to go for, to have something that was very exploratory uh, in nature. Um, and I wanted the user to kind of get lost, but not too, much, too lost, in a way. Uh, again, there was relatively little sketching in Figma. I really just started exploring stuff in the browser. Here's some of the process. Um, so here was the kind of imp the living identity that I wanted to kind of give the impression of that would react to the mouse. Um, Tons of hours tweaking variable fonts here, and it can go very wrong if you're not careful. Uh, there was experimentation with different ways to interact with the page scroll. It got a bit wild here. I don't know what was happening, but I managed to fix that. And um, so here is designing a four letter font in Glyphs app. Each variation of uh, the letter forms must have exactly the same number of points in, in exactly the same order, or the font breaks completely. Each letter ended up having about 18 variations. Um, this is what it looks like when you get it perfect. Things can get very messy. This is when it gets wrong. 
So I ended up with all these different variations. And at the same time had to deal with some kind of technical issues, uh, figuring out a lot of how the user scrolls and transitions through the different pages. So there were just endless tabs, just constant hundreds of tabs in my browser. Um, this is an example of navigating between the pages. You'll see that the, as you um, either scroll to the bottom of the page, uh, the signs pop up, or you can bring them up yourself, and the transition uh, kind of relates to which direction the, the signage is pointing. At the same time, the letter shapes transition between one style to another, depending on the theme of the page. I was constantly dragging the edges of the browser to test for different screen sizes. Uh, I have some kind of undiagnosed dragitis condition, I think. Um, there were some happy accidents when images weren't loading correctly. And then another rabbit hole I went down uh, was this LiDAR scanning, which you can do with your phone. You can just go around and take 3D scans of stuff. So I had all these scans from around town, and I went down like a three-day rabbit hole of trying to edit these in Blender on my Mac, just going crazy, and then realized you can actually just do it on the iPhone, and it's uh, way easier. So I procrastinated for almost a year on how to get these into the browser. Uh, the initial concept was to join different elements from all over town. There were happy accidents, another version, testing out backgrounds. And this is how it kind of ended up in the final uh, site. It's still a little buggy for my liking, but to be honest, I had to move on with my life. <laughs> so here's um, a little focus on the navigation. You'll notice that. I don't want to talk about it too much, because if you like, you can go in and explore yourself. I don't want to give too much away. Um, but you're not actually able to visit all the pages until you've found them. So there's this kind of thing that keeps track of where you are. Um, but you'll also notice a little music icon, because at some point I realized, of course, uh, every page has to have a soundtrack. So I kind of went down a three-day rabbit hole of just trying to make these audio loops for each page. Um, which was fun, but quite intense. Uh, and then all kinds of technical issues with uh, getting stuff to loop without a gap. Uh, that was like a months long nightmare. Uh, and then uh, how loud should the mastering be? I have no idea. This is you know, another rabbit hole there. And then I thought, OK, uh, it's great with all this exploration, but maybe the user needs a bit of help occasionally. So. Uh, inspired by the kind of topographical maps, I thought there could be some kind of navigation wayfinding system, um, which is maybe a little hard to find, but that's part of the fun. So it started with, again, dragging things to test. Uh, everything is kind of laid out with uh, SVG paths, uh, kind of uh, organically linking each place to each other. Like in this early version, they're just straight lines, but that kind of evolved uh, in various different ways. Uh, you can start to see it taking shape. And then I kind of thought back to, uh, wasn't Super Mario Brothers 3 great with its uh, map with the kind of dancing uh, icons? So um, there's another variable font in the site which actually just takes care of all the icons. So they all have their little kind of sway as well. You can, uh, you can do so many things with code. In this example, using JavaScript to split all of the text in a paragraph so that you can present it in different ways while it's still being accessible. Um, again, in this example, splitting a paragraph so it's incredibly illegible. And here, being able to kind of make your own sentence as well, if you like. There are all kinds of rabbit, um, not rabbit holes, uh, <laughs> uh, Easter eggs <laughs> uh, in the site, which uh, you can feel free to look out for. Um, another important thing was also to have kind of different layouts at different screen sizes. So you might have a different experience if you look on your mobile as, as opposed to on a, a desktop screen. Here's just some mobile views. So that's just about all I have today. But what I want to do is rewind for a few seconds back to those titles I was struggling with at the beginning. Um, if you're triggered by strobing lights, I'd ask you to look away for a few seconds. OK, we're going back, we're going back. OK, 
Going back all the way to the beginning. <sighs> okay, this was the original title of the talk, but I guess you could just really sum it all up by saying, make something you love and you know, see what happens. After all, somehow I ended up standing in front of you all right now, which I think is not nothing. Thank you.